everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be making a dubbing brush using the accessory uh, dubbing brush table for the Norvice. Um, I've made other dubbing brush videos using dubbing brush tables, uh, dubbing loops, uh, etc., etc. And so why not do one on this? This is a system that doesn't require a drill, but using the vise itself. If you don't know what a dubbing brush is, it's basically uh, like a dub loop, but a little bit more secure. You can tie this into any pattern. Um, it's got a stainless steel core. I'm using 0 .006 stainless steel. This stuff is really durable and uh, it's not gonna break like you know using, using normal wire. You're gonna want some wire snips handy and a brush. Um, I like these little um, pretty aggressive brushes and you also need this dubbing brush table accessory. So, um, Let's go ahead and get started. I've already got a hook in the vise. This is an Arex uh, TP615. Um, you need a really good strong hook. Make sure it's in there secure. We'll go ahead and rub, run the uh, stainless steel wire down through the eye. You don't have to have this in a bobbin, but it helps uh, it go a little faster. And then I just adjust this tag end. So I've got about two, three inches around my little knob here. And then I'll make sure that my uh, overwire is secure and I'll let the bobbin weight hold that in place. So let's check to make sure our table is in the right position. There's a little adjustment knob right here. If it's not, you've got kind of a felt material on top that material is not gonna stick to and rubber on the bottom that keeps it in place. So pretty easy, it's in position, we're ready to go. So for this, I'm gonna be, I've been tying up a lot of crayfish lately. So I'm just going to use this zonker strip and make a little uh, rabbit uh, dub brush. So I'm just going to pull some straight off the hide, trying to, to adjust those fibers too much. The butt ends are going to stick about an oh, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on my side of the wire. So the wire's you know in the middle of this material, but not quite in the middle. Um, and then I'll use those uh, uh, longer hair fibers to kind of create the nice bugginess to it. Here, some of them extend longer, some of them are shorter. It's just a, a, a flaw of using natural materials. Um, I'm kidding, it's not a flaw. It's what makes them awesome. So um, we're just gonna lay that out. And if you have any, uh, you wanna make sure it's nice and even and that you can cover it up. There's no blank spots. Um, otherwise you'll see it in the brush. But in my history of making these, that's not a huge issue. And you can see we used about two, three inches of that hide. I'll keep it to the side. For the next one, and here we're going to, have to add a little bit of flash. This is a little secret recipe here. Some Cohen's Carp Dub um, in this uh, blaze orange. Adds just the right amount of flash and also adds a little bit of those rubber legs, which is perfect for the crayfish crawdad patterns. I've been fishing for um, carp and uh, bass as of, of lately. You can't have enough. I'm trying to fill a, a whole box of them in different sizes and different, you know, some with flash and some without, but um, just spread that evenly out across there. And then um, I'm using some of this uh, uh, J Stockard uh, wax um, just to help hold uh, stuff in place. It's a low tack wax. And I'm just coating this uh, wire that's attached to the bobbin. And then I'll go ahead and lay that over the material and then bind it down right on top of my tag end in that little knob. It's got a little rubber grip there. And uh, I'll secure that. I like to hold both of these with my right hand to keep it secure. And check that out. Now, here's something really cool I like about this vise is I will turn it a quarter of a turn and lock it back in place and then I'll be able to adjust it. I don't have to redo a screw or anything, it just locks right in, so that's pretty cool. And I like where it's at and we'll just start spinning real slow. You don't need to go super fast. I found when you go wicked fast, it kind of mats all that material into the core. And so going a little bit slower actually helps keep those guard hairs out. But um, in all reality, we're going to brush it pretty aggressive. And so we would be able to pull those out anyway. But um, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just spinning this a whole bunch until I feel my right hand start to walk um, towards the material. It's gonna, you're going to feel it pull towards it. And that's, that's perfectly normal. That means, in my opinion, once it's moved about a half inch, you're secure. And I'm just going to hold these two wires pretty stout and secure. This is why I wanted a really good hook in the vise. And we're just brushing this thing super aggressive. You can see I'm putting quite a bit of force on this and it's uh, holding strong and we're creating just a wicked buggy, perfect crawdad body right here. Um, this is gonna be awesome. And I'm really happy with this color combination. 
I've been fishing these and had lots of success. And, you know, this, you could just palmer the rabbit. You could add a dubbing loop, uh, but the stainless steel core reduces that hide bulk and also adds a lot of durability. And that wax should hold your material in place um, pretty well. Uh, you can see I didn't brush out too much of that. And you can set this aside for your next brush or just discard it into this convenient wastebasket. I always do, after I brush it out, I'll do... Um, a handful of turns here just because when you brush it out we lost a little bit of fibers i just want to make sure it's tight and we'll go ahead and uh, pull this out and say my fly was already ready for this check it out all i do is just spin it on that little stainless steel wire sitting in the eye is not going to affect tying on tippet when you've got a eye this big on this size of hook but i'm just going to go back over itself and and right there behind the eye and check out that body and then, of course, I'd mat that down with a little bit of a, a shell, like an exoskin or something, um, to create that shell on that uh, crayfish or crawdad. But um, I'm not going to do that since I uh, am not ready at this point. But I just thought it was cool that I could have just spun it right on right there. So say I'm mid-fly, I could go ahead and just spin one on. And, hey, I want to use a dub brush now. Let's just run some wire through the eye, and there we go. Or you can cut it out like I just did. And um, there you go, you got a nice dub brush. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Um, if you, uh, you know, you could tie this in now onto a fly just like I would, you know, using one of my other dub brush tables, but um, pretty simple. So thanks for watching. Dub brushing is fun because you can make any color you want and in any combination you want. So hope that helps. Have a great day.